Well, good morning, everyone. Greetings from Northern Michigan. How is everything going? They're telling me that there's a little issue with the audio out in YouTube land. Are you guys uh, able to hear my audio now? Let's just see if you have me right now because everything should be set up properly. I'm going to double check it to make sure that everything's right. Laptop mic is on and I do have a reading from it. Is it not broadcasting? I really hate this delay because I'm trying to get this thing all set up and I've got to wait 30 seconds for you guys to answer me so we get a little bit of dead air when we start. I did a little work on the amillary sphere last night and finished off putting in, you know, the different longitude lines there. We're going to have a look here at the moon ring today, and I'm going to talk about how I'm setting that up. Okay, so you have me now. Good. All right, so here's the stage that we're at right now. This is the armillary sphere that we have, and the one thing that we're missing right now is the ecliptic of the moon right here. So this is, this is the ecliptic of the solar system, the Earth's orbit around the sun. Now we have to put in the ecliptic of the moon. Now there's a couple of things that we have to remember about this. First of all, it's kind of set at an angle like so. Well, these areas where it crosses the ecliptic on the front and the back, these are called nodes, and at these nodes are the only places that a um, solar eclipse can occur and a lunar eclipse. So we know that at these nodes, we have to look at the phases of the moon on the ring right here. We know that at the node, we have to either have a full, we either have to have a full moon, or we have to have a new moon. So that's going to help us determine where we're going to set these clips. So let's go ahead and just put the clips on real quick. And we're going to set that right at, we're going to set that right on the ecliptic. All right, so let's do this so that we do it a little better. I've got to remember, I'm a doctor, I've got cool tools. So we're going to use this curved hemostat right here to set this in. So there's one. Now let's put the other one over here. And we want those set so that the node occurs at both the full moon and at the new moon. I think it might be easier to come at this from the other end. Can you guys see this okay? I can zoom in a little bit on it. Let me check that real quick and we'll see where the zoom is. There. So what we're doing right here is I'm just trying to get this little clip in. I don't know how surgeons do this. They, they can do an entire operation through a tiny little hole in somebody's belly. Come on. There we go. Now... We want that pretty much opposite the other one. And we want it on the full moon like so. Now, these clips are slightly different. The ones that hold the angle here. So we've got to try and get these in. Now the way that's at a little bit of an angle, the bottom one here. So that's the one that goes down on the bottom. The 
rather difficult to get in, as you can see. But patience, patience is a virtue, right? I'm going to go ahead and take my camera off because you don't really need to see me. You want to see this thing. Give me just a second here. There we go. That just gives us a little bit more space to see. Now the bottom one set at a little bit of an angle. There we go. Now the third one's kind of a bear to get in, but we're going to give it a try. So we'll get these clips on and then what we'll do is we'll kind of adjust them a little bit so that they're just right. So this one we got to move over just a little bit. Just need to rotate this a hair. You got to rotate it and try and knock, knock the clips off which is sometimes easier said than done. So this one we're kind of setting to the full moon. All right, so I'm somewhat happy with that. Now one thing, so as you can see right here, the lunar ecliptic is different than the ecliptic of the solar system. Now, the reason that full moon, the reason that an eclipse The reason that an eclipse can only occur at the time of the new moon or the full moon, let's see if we can get that over a little bit better. Let's focus on this okay, guys. Let me see if I can clean up that focus just a little bit. There. That should be pretty good. Sorry about the little yellow box. I have yet to figure out how to get rid of that. But at least it's dim. So, Right here would be um, so right here would be the full moon, and right here would be the new moon. The reason that an eclipse can only occur at these two times is that the moon has got to line up with the sun. Now, the fact that this lunar ecliptic is so close to the Earth is a little bit misleading. The moon is approximately one-third the size of the Earth. And if you were to draw this out to scale, now if you were to draw that out to scale, instead of being, instead of having the lunar ecliptic right here, you would actually have it out about here. All right? and it's 30 diameters of the moon away from the Earth. So if you think about it, if you, if you know what a racquetball is, a racquetball is a ball about the size of an egg, a little bit bigger, you know, about the size of a duck egg. And if you were, if that was the scale of the Earth, the moon would be about one meter away from it. That's how far out the lunar orbit is. So we're kind of set right there. So let's go ahead and, and proceed on to the next part of the build.
I'm going to go grab the instructions. I forgot to bring those over. All right, so let's go see where we are right now. We're kind of just finishing this step right here. And now we have to put our two rings on. Now we've got two rings right here. This is a meridian ring to set the uh, tilt of the earth. And this is the time ring, which goes along with the axis or which goes along with the equator of the earth. You know, as the reason that we have timekeeping, the way our timekeeping is based on the rotation of the earth. So we, oh, wait a minute. We do have two little pieces that we still have to put on. Okay, and that's these guys right here, these little rings. So let's go ahead and get these little rings. Missy, go away. Missy's up on the table. She's going to try and help me here a little bit, I think. So there's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. So we've got round ones and we have these old ones. Let's go see how those go on. Okay, the round one is first. And the oval one's on top. The glue finally set up last night so that I could use this thing again. Now, the next thing that we have to do is it looks like we need to go ahead and trim off the excess axis here. And to do that, I'd ideally like to have some wire cutters, but I don't happen to have any. But I do have some good scissors. The camera jiggles a little bit. Missy's chewing on the um, chewing on the cable for it. You know, I could cut that with that, but you know something? We have technology. I love Dremel tools. <coughs> oh, that hurt. What do you think the chances are that landed right on the bit?
Pretty good. Kind of remind you of the dentist. I don't know about you guys, but that kind of reminds me of the dentist. All right, so we've got those two pieces on. They're kind of snug fit. They say that you can glue them. I think I'm going to hold off doing that just yet. So let's see the next one here. All right. So what we're going to have is we're going to have, a, it's going to be set something like this. But first what we have to do is we have to put this in and then put this over it. set properly. Now this one goes up here and the bottom will go in right here. Thinking that might not be quite smooth. There we go. That's pretty well centered. That's pretty well centered. Let's go on over here. How do we want to do this? I'm thinking. Well, let's think about it for a second. So midnight would probably be over here. Well, I'm wondering if that's going to vary with time of year. That's pretty well it. And it says there that you can glue that. All right, now, now it's kind of a matter of adjusting it. So, I think that's what we need to do next. Now, we've got the ecliptic of the moon set correctly. All right, so we've got a new moon here, and we have a full moon here. Now, the other thing that we have to have a look at is that we're going to have a lunar eclipse in May, which means that this full moon that means that the node of the full moon has to line up in May. 
and that would be over here. So that's February, March, April, May. Now, I just looked this up a couple of minutes ago, and I, I've got to see what, I think it's like May 11th that we're having an eclipse here. May 16th, we're going to have a full lunar eclipse. Yes, I will be live streaming it, assuming that the telescope somewhat works. So I think that what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to line up the full moon with May 16th, because that would be a full moon on that date, and that would, that would align our ecliptic with the ecliptic of the uh, solar system. So I think that what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to move this whole ring over some. And I don't think that's going to be easy. I think probably the best way to do it is realize the ecliptic is going to be at this ring. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out the ecliptic And then we're going to rotate the solar system ecliptic ring until May lines up here. You know what? I wonder if that's glued. I'm thinking I glued that. Yeah, I do believe I did. Well, that would have been handy to have had in the instructions. Because now I'm probably going to have to disassemble this thing and try and do it again. But in any event, we'll make that right. So this is going to need a little bit more work done to it. But I think that for all intents and purposes right now, we can kind of figure things out. So until this is corrected, until this ring right here is corrected, we're not going to be able to determine. We're just simply not going to be able to determine the date of eclipses or the date of full moons. So that's just something that I've got to work on. So what we'll do is we'll just put it back in for right now, just so that things don't get lost. So here's the new moon. See, if you want to make this a useful tool, it has to be calibrated correctly. Now, I think that a lot of people that put this together just put it together and it looks pretty and they have no idea what to do with it. But for those of us that are going to do it, you know, wait a minute, I'm thinking maybe I can do this can I do this a different way? I'm wondering. You know what, if I just line this up like this, here, yeah, like so, I'm thinking that I, I'm thinking that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. I don't have to move this at all.
So let's go ahead and get these pieces in. And let's see if we can make this any more awkward there, folks. I think we had to put that one in backwards. So we want the node to line up with the full moon in May, about mid-May. So that would be right around there or so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the ecliptic in here. Okay, so I've got that lined up with the full moon, and we're going to clip it right here in mid-May. That's the way we want it set. About right there, like so. Now over here in November, where coincidentally, Damn it, that already came off. What we're going to do is we're going to line up the new moon with that. And just make it work. All right, let's rethink this a little bit because this is getting a little awkward right in here. So that's going to be, anybody know why November 15th is an unofficial state holiday here in Michigan? Boy, that just doesn't want to hold, does it? I don't know. Let's try the other way first. November 15th is the start of deer season. You know, there's another problem with this. All right. So we can line up. So we can line up the eclipses here, but is the ecliptic going to be bending this way? Or is it going to be tilted that way? I guess we probably ought to look that up and find out if it's the ascending or the descending node of the eclipse. That'll save us some problems later, because you know, in inevitably, we're going to put it on the wrong way if we don't check. Hey, thank you for the super chat, uh, Judy. That's very kind of you. So let's just look at the uh, May 16th lunar eclipse. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at it. Oops. Now, Earth's shadow will be coming from low, and it'll be coming, it'll essentially be coming from the southeast, or the southwest limb of the moon, and exiting in the northeast limb of the moon. So let's go see if we can get this right. I think the lunar orbit goes this way. So that would be So the tilt would be low here and high here. And it would be a full moon. So right That's the way it needs to get set up. 
So this is the low side and that's the high side. So the low side is this clip right here. Let's get over here to me. The high side would be over here. In November. We'll get this adjusted a little bit better here in a moment. About right there. Okay, good. That's May, good. Okay, everything's looking good so far. Now we'll take these little clips. Put this one right here. Did it wrong again. All right. So the full moon goes in May and November, and that's the side clips. It looks like it's going to set like that. All right. So this is the low side, that's the high side. So the low side is this one. I got another idea here. We're going to put that at about the half moon. Okay. Let's 
see whether or not maybe this one here has to go on first. Okay. So we've got that one on. Let's see if we can get the corresponding half moon up on the other side working. This one will be the high one. So it's going to go on like, oh, like that. Okay. Now we're going to have to smooth out those dates a little bit. And this is just a hair rotated. So we're going to try and get that kind of lined up as best we can. So right now the full moon is on April 20th, so we need to move it over just a little bit more. Got to kind of do it carefully because it's kind of tough to do. And keep these clips on at the same time. Almost there. Constantly adjusting them all. Keep kind of even tension on it. All right, so there is the moon at about May 15th. And it's moving in the right direction. Now what we're going to try and do is secure it with some clips. Right here. Didn't say this was easy. Now, once again, that's off a little bit, but I think that we're going to be able to shift it once we have this other piece in. It'll be a little more stable to shift. Actually, no, I think that we can probably do this right now. So there's that. Let's get these pieces lined up. Good. We're going to bend it just a hair because I want the full moon lined up on this date. We're trying to do it without dumping all the other clips. That's close, that's close, good, almost there. This is why diamond cutters go insane at an early age. Okay, so we're gonna hang on to this. We're gonna try and get this last little bracket in, in the right position. That's not looking too bad. So we've got 
the full moon lined up here about May 15th. We have the new moon out here in November. And then these two clips right here, we just this holds the ecliptic, and we've just got to make sure that they're kind of opposite each other. Hold it stable. I think that's right. And these will be lined up on the half moon. And these two here will be lined up on the new moon and the full moon. There. I think we have that right. Let's go on over to chat for a minute and see if we've got anything going. All right, so what do we have going on here? Really not a whole lot. Can you guys see this thing okay? Let me check the camera here. All right, so here's how we set this up. This is the ecliptic of the solar system right here, and it has the months of the year on it. This is the ecliptic of the moon. And I know that I've got a lunar eclipse coming on May 16th, which is right here. So that, by definition, must be a full moon. And it also must be at a node. So these clips right here are at the nodes. So basically what I'm saying is that we can have we can have lunar eclipses at this point in the orbit of the moon and we can have solar eclipses at this point in the orbit of the moon. And in order to do that we have to look at where the sun's going to be and the sun is determined by the ecliptic right here and that's determined by the date. Now, let's go ahead and set this in. I think we're pretty well done with this. So, we've got a stand right here that we put it in. And one of the things about the stand is as you put it in, this can rotate. Okay? And what we want to do is we want to set that up to our current latitude, which is 44 degrees. Here's the north. And our latitude is 44 degrees. So this is the line right here that is parallel to the equator. This line we can imagine as being parallel or is being directly over the prime meridian. And then what we can do is we can actually set this to where we are. Now, let's look at the ecliptic right here. Now, by rotating this to today's date, Okay, hang on just a second. So, let me see if I can zoom this out a little bit. All right. So here's the way this works. This base right here is our horizon. This would be our zenith. We've got our axial tilt at 44 degrees north latitude set here, and that is set right down here. In this, this ring is the latitude ring, and we've got it set so that our latitude is, is correct in here. So here's our zenith. This is our horizon. 
This appears to be the equator. This is the equator. This is the prime meridian. And this is the ecliptic of the sun. So what we can do is we can come over here and rotate this so that we have today's date. And today's date, of course, is January 27th. So if we look right here, what we can do is we can set this to about January 27th. And that would be right there. That is where the sun will rise. And this will give us the direction of the sunrise. And then if you look in this general direction right here, like this. So the sun is going to be right here. And then as the day goes on, and the earth rotates from west to east, it's going to follow that path. You can see exactly where the sun will be during the entire path. And that's one of the ways that an armillary sphere works. Now that we actually have this thing put together, I'm going to sit down and play with it a little bit. Because one other thing that we have to do is that we have to put we have to put our planets, the moon and the sun, in their proper position on these rings. And that's going to take a little bit of research on my part. I know, for example, the sun, which is this piece right here, this piece you'll set over today's date. And that way there, when you, when you rotate the ecliptic, you can follow the sun as it goes through, and you'll see exactly where the sun will be in the sky. But those are just some little things that I've got to put together and clip on here. And once they are clipped on, we'll kind of go over how it's done. So, let's see if we've got anything going on in the chat. we got one super chat from Judy. That'll go to some cat food. I see we have Joe Whip out in the uh, out in the audience. We also have two ADHD cat, Lone Tech, Fred Bailey's out there, Gaz Allen. And Seawolf, one of our channel members. Along with Judy. So I think that that's basically what we have right now. So the armillary sphere is completed. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to sit down and play with it a little bit and make sure I understand its function really well. And then maybe uh, get a little portable camera, get in here and be able to see it a little bit better, kind of like this. Let's see this as I drop it right on it. So we'll get in here so that we can look at it a little bit better. Let's just make sure that that's coming in right side up. Yeah. So we can really get some nice detail with this. And we'll have a quick look at it. That'll be for a future episode, though. Well, guys, thank you very much for joining me for the last part of this build. Uh, I've got a couple of sm small details that still need to be done. But essentially, 
This is our armillary sphere. This is a three-dimensional astrolabe. And we're going to learn how to use this along with using the astrolabe. Unless anybody else has any comments, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, call it a day. We've got enough done here. So, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for joining me. It was very nice of you all, all to come by. We'll have uh, more building with Bob. I think we're probably going to do a sundial sometime this spring or summer. Um, there's a really interesting heliochronometer that I would like to build. And uh, I was looking at Lazy Susans last night. I found a 32-inch Lazy Susan for a reasonable amount of money. It's like 120 bucks, but it's a lot cheaper than some of the others. One of the ways that our sundial is going to work is that I have to be able to rotate a significant part of it between between the gnome the, between the gnomon and and the uh, uh, analemma and the analemma and we're going to be using that to tell the time at any time of the day and any time of the year it should be accurate to within a minute or so so until then this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan thank you for your support of the channel make sure you stop by um, my new channel, which is Slide Rules and Mathematics, uh, I've got some work over there uh, that I've put out on time, and I think that you may enjoy it. And there'll be 